Welcome back, and in this video we will be explaining the concept of resources in Synchro. Now if you're coming from a P6 background, we'll also explain the differences between P6 resources and Synchro resources at the end of the video. So let's start. Looking at this example project, it's obvious that these 3D objects are somehow linked to the tasks. What many users don't know is that these objects are not directly linked to the tasks. They are linked to resources that are in turn linked to the tasks. Now this is done most of the time by Synchro by default, so many users are not even aware of this, but if you are, you can use it in a much more effective way. So let's start by explaining the basics. As we said earlier, these 3D objects by default are each linked in a one-to-one -one fashion to resources, so that you could link those in turn to different tasks. In some cases, you may have a breakdown of this task, for example, and so you'll be able to link the same resource to three different activities. Here, for example, we link the same resource, slab level 2, to three different sub-activities of FRC, form reinforced poor, with different appearance profiles. And this is shown in the 4D view in three different colors to denote three different types of activities, blue, yellow, then green, then back to original color. In this case, we didn't do this for all of the project, just for examples purposes. What makes resources such a powerful tool is that you can also link multiple 3D objects to the same resource and then assign that to an activity to group objects. For example, in this case in our project, we have foundations for the annex building and foundations for the main building as all of these 3D objects over here, they are all under the same parent, however, they were grouped separately into their own resources, and therefore Synchro treats them as one single resource. If you're familiar with P6 resources, for example, you may have noticed that in this case, each element has either its own resource or belongs to a resource that has more elements such as the foundations. However, they're still grouped in a way so that resources are scheduled separately. That's unlike in P6 where you group all of the concrete into a single resource. You can still get the benefits of that in Synchro by creating a resource called concrete, for example, that doesn't necessarily have a 3D representation that can be assigned to all of the tasks that use it with different units. So I can assign this to all of the tasks that have the word FRC in them. Simply drag and drop. And then use for each task for concrete the planned units. And this can be automatically populated from the model-based quantities as well. You can also have different types of resources, for example, equipment, location, and material. Equipment can be used for trucks, cranes, forklifts, and material is used for concrete or objects that we've used, or human for labor. Now, I sometimes use human resources to represent something like concrete, just so that they can be stored separately from the material resources and they're easier to find. When we first imported our models, we were asked at the end of the import to specify how we want to create our resources. So this is called the resource wizard. It can be opened even after you import the model and we'll see that in a second. No assignment means the objects are not gonna be assigned to resources, which means they can never be assigned to tasks unless they're assigned to resources again. Assigned to a new resource allows you to assign to a new resource and if you have an existing resource and if you have an existing resource you wanna add 3D models to, you'll use the first option. It's grayed out in this case because we don't have any resources. We were asked to choose the resource type. And then we were asked about how we'd like to group those. So the first option would have grouped all of our models into one single resource. And I'll try that. 
and you'll see now that the entire set of models is treated as one object if I try to assign it to a task. So if I go to create tasks at root level, then all of the project is assigned to that task. If I delete that resource, I can reopen the resource wizard without having to re-import the models by simply selecting all of the models and right click resource wizard or control shift R. Then I can explore the other options and we'll see that the second option will assign each model to a resource under the same node. Third option will assign each element to a resource, all of which are grouped under the same node. And the last one will preserve the resources tree and make it all grouped under the same node. And here, we've seen this before, you can limit the level. However, limiting the level here will only limit the resources tree, but not the 3D objects tree. This will allow you to uh, work with them as limited objects while still maintaining all of the data at the children level. I'll explain that in a second. Um, however, even though it's less flexible, it is lighter on your machine to limit both the 3D objects tree and resources tree if you need to. In this case, I'll click on finish and we'll have everything grouped under new material resource and we can drag those out if we don't like that and have the exact same tree for three objects and resources. In the previous example, which I'll reopen again, we had foundations grouped under the same resource. And let's show those in the view. Grouped under the same resource. However, 3D objects were not limited by the tree. So this allows us to extract the quantities from each object and put them at the resource level if you want to. For example, these concrete quantities which are extracted from that user field in 3D properties, user fields, and volume. So to recap the difference between P6 and Synchro resources is that P6 resources will come into Synchro and they will be correctly assigned to their tasks. However, there's an additional part to resources in Synchro, which is 3D resources. And since 3D doesn't exist in P6, these work a little bit differently in Synchro. Later in the course, we'll work more with grouping resources, and you'll get a clear understanding of how this works in the context of a project. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.